Hello, welcome to the Renault Trex engine plant. The current engine assembly plant was opened in 2004 on the Venetius site, which dates from 1915. We assemble three types of engines in this factory, namely 11 liter, 8 liter, and 5 liter engines. They are used in several Volvo Group product ranges, including Renault Trex trucks. The engines are fitted to truck, construction machinery, coaches and buses, boats and industrial generators. Here we are at the first assembly line for the 11 liter engines. 15 robots assemble the parts that will make up the internal part of the engine. All around are preparation areas for the sub-assemblies, which, once ready, automatically join the line in a so-called marriage area. The operators work in an elementary production units. Each shift starts with a five minutes and over meeting to pass on key information about the previous team's production. Safety, quality meetings are held once a week and once a month managers invite their teams to a general information meeting. Operators are recruited on the basis of their ability to work in a team and their versatility. The factory applies the free 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 rule, which means that each operator is trained on free jobs. Each job is mastered by free operators, and there are free multi-skills operators per sector. In other words, operators who know all the jobs. Assembly is not the only task for operators, as they are also involved in projects of their choice, and they are proactive on the daily basis proposing concrete ideas for progress to improve their workstation, working conditions, quality and safety, and even the environment. Here we can see the liner, piston, connecting rod assembly being inserted into the cylinders. The row picks up the assembly at the edge of the line, turns it over and places it above the cylinder. The assembly is then taken over by a second robotic arm which uses a suction system to hold the piston during the insertion process. The liner is then inserted by pressure into the block cylinder. The robot repeats this operation six times as it's a six cylinder engine. Here we are at the heart of the semi-automated line where the main components are assembled by robots. This is where we assist in the installation of one of the most important components of the engine, namely the cylinder head gasket, which prevents water and oil from mixing in the engine. The rower picks up a gasket using suction cups. It then places it on the engine block and retrieves a prepared cylinder head from a special area. The gasket is then tightened, starting with the middle screws and working outwards. This ensures smooth and optimal tightening. shaft is an important part of the engine that synchronizes the opening and closing of the intake and exhaust valves.
It's a Navy part that the operator picks up thanks to a gripping system that allows the lift heavy parts without effort, thereby avoiding any risk for strain injuries. A QR code engraved on the side of the part contains its serial number for traceability. We are nearing the end of the semi-automated line. The engines are now picked up by an automated wire guided trolley and transferred to the next line. Aside from the fact that it moves on its own, the wire guided trolley has the advantage of placing the engine at a high matching the operator's high for good working ergonomics. This system also allows the engine to be rotated completely so that it can be worked on from above instead of below. There is no need for a pit to install the oil pump. Another good point for ergonomics. Following on the first line, we can see the second U-shaped line. The first operation on this line consists of removing the computer box, which is no longer needed. It's replaced by a paper document which details the composition of the engine and allows it during the rest of the assembly process. The manual customization of the engine starts on this line, according to the type of vehicle on which it will be fitted. The guided vehicle stops at each assembly station and then automatically moves to the next station once the operation has been completed within the allotted time. On this semi-manual line, two operations are carried out by a co-active robot, so-called because it works safely with humans. This robot handles the heavy parts delivered to it by a wire-guided trolley and performs repetitive and precise tasks. A U-shaped line leaves a large free area in the center so that the stock of parts can be placed as close as possible to the operators and assembly stations. This saves time and money in the supply process. It's also in this area that specialized operators prepare sub-assemblies, which are then delivered by automated guided car just as the engine arrives at the assembly station. The components of the sub-assemblies are stored on shelves at ground level. Operators use a error-proof system called pick to light which uses different colored lights to ensure that the right parts are picked in the right quantity. At this point in the line, the engine is about 80% complete.
factory uses a pick to light system so that the operators know which parts and how many parts to pick. When the operators start picking, different lights are lit on the shelves. The operator presses on this light to confirm the retrieval. At the same time, the stock is automatically updated, triggering replenishment from the central stock if necessary. Here we are at the end of the assembly line. The engine is finished and complying with the customer's order. At this stage, the engine weights around 900 kilograms. It's then sent to the test area. The assembled engine automatically moves to this section of line where the seals of the oil, water and diesel circuits are checked. The guided vehicle stops at each station and the operator connects a tube to the circuit inlet, blowing air into it and ensuring the outlet is closed. The aim is to check there is no loss of pressure and therefore no leakage. If the test is conclusive, we move on to the next circuit. All our engines undergo the first quality test. The air circuit sealing will be checked during the vehicle assembly because this verification requires another engine components to be connected to the circuit, such as the radiator. Once the leakage controls have been completed, the engines undergo cold testing. The engine is placed on a metal support before being filled with around 30 liters of oil and placed in one of the two test chambers. In this test, the engine is not started, but is powered by a drive system to check the strength of the parts against each other, thereby ensuring that the assembly has been correctly executed. A sample of 5% of the engines is taken from the production run to undergo hot testing. The engine is placed on a metal support called sled. It's continuously supplied with water, oil, air, diesel, and it's operated at different speed ranges as if it were mounted on a truck, which is itself loaded to its maximum capacity. Once the various tests have been completed, the engines are sent to the paint shop. After the taste phase, the engines are taken to the paint shop where they are first masked. This involves protecting parts of the engine that are not to be painted with plugs, adhesive tape, all caps. Engines are painted to protect them from corrosion and to give them their brand colors. Runner trucks engines are gray. Once painted, the engines are placed in an accelerated drying tunnel for around one hour. The masking is then removed and the quality of the paint is checked. Lastly, the engines are stored and shorted by brand. Shipments are then organized according to the needs of the brands for their customer. The 
The Skills Center is a unique modular facility that is open to everyone. It's located in the heart of the plant and covers an area of 500 meters square, offering a number of training rooms and a tech lab that can host all the internal training sessions of the engine plant, as well innovation seminars. The aim of this facility is to encourage the development of skills and open up new opportunities to train employees for today's needs and to prepare them for tomorrow's jobs. The factory was originally built on a 350 hectare site to manufacture barely cars. The last car manufactured on this site in 1939 was the Dauphin Berlier, also called the VRRP, not to be confused with the Renault Dauphin. The plant building is modern and bright thanks to the glass roofs and skylights which let in plenty of sunlight, thus avoiding expensive and less pleasant electric lighting. It's also air conditioned. The interior of the factory is pressurized to keep the dust down. 640 people work in this factory. Well, tour is over. We hope you enjoyed it. If you want to explore our other facilities, please visit Renault dash trucks.com see you